Hi, welcome to Universal Interiors. This is Leslie Ingolstead, and today I have the privilege of having my uncle John Downs near me and very dear to me. He is also known in our family as Jack, but for all y'all out there, he's John Downs. He's been part of the community for many a season, lives still on Buffalo Lake. Right. Right it is. And how many years have you been living out on Buffalo Lake, Uncle? Oh, 31 going on 47 years. <laughs> 47. Okay, I knew that in that neighborhood. You raised a beautiful family, and my precious Aunt Dorothy did a lot to help, as you always give major good credit. Yes, yes. 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 She's an exceptional woman. Yes. My uncle and aunt both taught in the Detroit Lakes school system. Mm. And how long were you a teacher in DL? Oh. I shouldn't ask you these years. He was there a while, trust me. Okay, now I have. He's a math teacher for Pete's sakes. So I thought this would be easy. Well, let's see, two years <laughs> plus. Uh, Is all those numbers. 20, I think it was 27 years. Was it? Yeah. And you came up, I know that at one time you were also down in Oklahoma. You had started with an oil? Yeah, so I worked for Phillips Petroleum for, for six years. Six years. Was that an engineering Yes. Okay. Uh, well, yes, uh, engineering and geologist. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But he had to move up north here to meet his love of his life. No, I, no, we were married before then. Oh, okay. No, I worked. I was in Detroit Lakes from '53 oh, through '55, and then this, uh, right. I was gone for. I go. I think it was seven years. Okay. Six, seven years. I so don't when know. you were in the '50s, before you went down there, then you were a coach. Yes. Yes. You want to brag a little bit because I heard you have a little bragging rights. I think. Maybe. Well. Basketball. With with uh, many sports, any success a coach has uh, is dependent upon the material. Oh, okay. Makes and sense. I was blessed with good material. You and were. We were able to win the district both in 54 and 55. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very good. But we did have the uh, success we won't beat. Uh, uh, more than three out of the five times we played them. Yeah, that's saying a lot. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. So that was a that was a highlight of your life for a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But majority of I would say is raising a few kids out there in Buffalo Lake. Yes, but that came in uh, I think started in '62. Okay. okay. When we, well, we had our family before then, our sure. three kids, and then we uh, inherited three kids from my sister-in-law. Right, and the year was, do you remember that I was early was, I 60s? I think it was 62. Okay. My aunt and uncle raised my other family of cousins after there was a loss yes. and um, helped raise some beautiful kids, my cousins, and blessed them pretty huge Yeah. with the wisdom and a little hard work. I know they weren't afraid to work in kids, including my younger sister went out there and... Uh, <laughs> she was also put in the workforce for the summertime at all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, well, it was a little reciprocity because the first year we moved back from Oklahoma, we lived out at your place. That's right. And your mother took care of our kids while Dorothy and I were teaching. And That's right. uh, so a little reciprocity there. Good. And That's I don't know, true. I think that probably. Uh, we got the best of it because Mara was uh, no problem at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> but our kids, I remember the one time uh, uh, we came back from school and your mom said, well, I had an accident today. And if one had been one of my kids, I would have left them. Because <laughs> Dan had fallen into the manure. Oh. He fell okay. off a fence into the manure, and she said, <laughs> I felt a responsibility to your kids, 
and I cleaned them up. But if it would have been one, one of my kids, I would have left it. Oh, that's so funny. I did not know that story. That is, is that good. Right? No. Yeah, she did a, her fair share of work out on the farm. We were raised outside of um, Audubon Lake Park area down south of there on Marshall Lake and shared some memories, as my uncle was saying, out there and shared the Downses on the upper level and the Ulrichs on the lower level. Yes. Yeah, memories were made and also so many out there in Buffalo Lake. The memories go on and on. They still do because my uncle is there as a 90-year-old youngin out there and he's had his share of uh, llamas. Are they still in your picture? No. Just down no, to dogs? No, they've gone. Okay. Yeah. Raising trees besides kids. Planted a lot of trees too. Yes. Yeah. Now I know I would love for you to tell you raised, helped raise a young man from I oh, don't even oh, know what country. Oh, uh, Sivrik Pathamavong who was a uh, he claimed he was a Laotian okay. that had swum the Mekong River and got into a displaced person camp, and he lived there for about six months until he could get permission to come to this country. Oh, and, is that uh, right? He uh, came, and he stayed with uh, a couple of people, and eventually, uh, because he was staying with the second person he lived with, uh, uh, they lived on uh, Heiderland Lake. Oh, okay. And that okay. was in the uh, Frazee District. And he had started school here. Okay. And he wanted to re- re- remain in school in Detroit Lakes. Sure. So he, but he couldn't and still live in the De- uh, Frazee District. So he had to find a place to live. And so oh, he that's how uh, you came into the Downses. He came into the Downses, yeah. And Did you still have the boys at home, or a lot of the kids? Oh Let's no, uh, I think that uh, he was the only one we had at okay. the time. That's yeah. what I. That's what I wondered. Yeah. Yep, and I know my cousin Jonathan Danielson spent some time out there. Yes. You were good at opening those doors quite wide. Yeah. Well. You know with, how God loves to love on. You sure loved on people. Well, I want to break a little bit about Seavrick. Good, please uh, do. He is an amazing, amazing character. I had him in geometry class, and he wasn't doing too well because of the language barrier. Oh, certainly. And so uh, uh, he uh, transferred at the middle of the year, or maybe even before then, to uh, he took uh, art, and uh, mechanical drawing and uh, uh, welding. All at the high school? Yeah. And uh, in a half a year's time, I believe he was the best artist that Chuck Mary had in his class. Well, maybe, I think Chuck was teaching in high school at that time. And then, uh, he was the best uh, mechanical drawing huh. student they had, and he was also uh, the best welder. And all really? this, all this, he was competing against kids that had been in the class for a full year. Oh, and then he so went, a lot of gifts. Then he went to uh, a school at uh, Wadena. Okay, and got a degree in uh, electronics and he had various electronics jobs but he finally ended up with IBM down in Rochester and they uh, he kind of took off from there he took off from there well he he uh, uh, was in demand by by seven depart, several department heads, but the one department he was in, they were closing because they were only making a million dollars a year, and that wasn't enough for IBM. <laughs> so he so that's he, pretty amazing story. And then so the his uh, department head says, Seavrick, you're going to be paid until uh, September first, but here it is the first of all of uh, August take off worth we're, we're not we're not going to do any work and so Seabrick took off and he went to the west coast and then he went to the along the uh, south uh, southern United States 
to the Carolinas and then he came back uh, home. And uh, during that time he got some ideas. And so he eventually was a, a cab driver, self-employed cab driver down in Dallas. And then he would go back to Thailand for every, well, he spent half the year in Thailand. Every three months or so, he'd go back there. But he uh, got some land over there. He uh, got some irrigation into it. He started raising uh, some trees, uh, fruit trees, that were marketable in China. They're, I don't think they're marketed in this country. And uh, then he grew rice. And then he got some land up north, and he, uh, I don't know, I think he raised rice up there too. But he was the, the only, he had the only uh, automated irrigation system in uh, Thailand. Huh. And he... That is amazing stuff. To find out what a young man and how far he is, all because of those helping hands. That's a pretty amazing story. Well, I he, need to um, just say... I'm going to bring this man back because he's got some more stories to tell. I sure appreciate you joining us today, and we'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.